Paris North Railway Station, the busiest railway station in all of Europe. From here on, you find high-speed trains to Belgium, the Netherlands, United Kingdom, and the Ruhr area in Germany, and of course to the north of France. High-speed trains to Belgium and the Netherlands are pretty often fully booked, so we'll be taking a more affordable, slower train to Malbaise. From where on, you find a connection on other trains that will go to Charleroi in Belgium. From where on, you can continue your journey, and for some parts of Belgium, this connection is even faster. The best part of this all, I'm taking you guys with me. If you like this video or this is a helpful video to you, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to have asked any questions or even if you just want to say hello, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, and if you'd like to see more trip reports about the more sustainable way of transportation, hit the subscribe button. If you don't want to do anything, also hit the bell icon. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and or cross-bordering traveling to show you what it's like on a more, to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. It's mainly by train. Well, this is both a long distance and an international train, so it ticks both boxes. But for now, let's just roll the intro. I arrived in Paris with a TCV Lyria high-speed train that came from Switzerland. I do have a trip report as well on this, and you can find it on this channel and in the description of this video. The TCV high-speed trains between Switzerland and Paris do arrive at the railway station of Paris Gare de Lyon. From here on, you also find high-speed trains to Italy, the southeast of France, and the northeast of Spain. You find good public transportation connections between the different terminal railway stations of Paris, but still, it is holding back quite some people to make a journey where they have to change trains in Paris. And partially I can understand, especially if you're not an experienced traveler, or you're doubting about your language skills, I can understand that this is a little bit scary. However, it's not. It's actually quite easy. This map shows what areas of France and the neighboring countries will be served by what terminal railway station of Paris. This goes, by the way, beyond what you see on this map. You also find sleeper trains to Austria, and soon a new service to Berlin will be launched. Until 2020, you even found sleeper trains that will go all the way to Moscow, also creating a direct connection between Paris and bigger cities along its way in Germany, Poland and Belarus. And even though you will find trains that will pass by Paris, if you change trains in Paris, you have much more choices of trains you can take, and also take more affordable trains for the same reason. Maybe I'd like to make a kind of video explanation video on how to change between the different terminal railway stations in Paris. If you are interested in that, please let me know in the comments. Making such a kind of a video really takes a lot of time, so I really want to make sure that this helps enough people. Anyway, I took an RER local train. This is somewhere between a metro and a local express train serving the suburban areas of Paris from the railway station of Gare de Lyon to the railway station of Paris Gare du Nord. And this here is the train arriving at Gare du Nord, so Paris North railway station. The RER, suburban local trains, are located under the railway station. And obviously, you also find the metro right under the railway station. And one thing that's absolutely for sure, the railway station of Paris North is big and can be very crowded as well even though it wasn't that busy when I was here. However, if you continue your journey from here, you most likely do this on a high-speed train or a semi-long-distance train like what I did. You just need to follow the signs that said Grande Ligne. Everything has been marked in the second and third language as well. The second language is always English, and there it says mainline trains, as you can see here on the left. The third language in French railway stations is in general consistently a specific language. However, at the railway stations of Paris North, this is different per sign. This might be Chinese, Italian, German, Dutch, whatever. If you travel with the metro or the RER trains, take your ticket with you, because you might need it if you go through the gates and want to leave the railway station. There's really a big underground section, as you see here on the left. And that's not even it. You'll find more entrances to the metro, although I didn't put that on camera. In my high-speed train that came from Switzerland, I could buy a metro ticket already in advance. 
This is possible in quite some high speed trains where there is a dining car available. So just go there, it might save you buying a ticket and waiting in line for the vending machines over here in Paris. And this gives me some more time so I could film the railway station of Paris North a bit. Even though it's impossible to show you everything. Right here I'm walking in the underground section that is directly located under the main concourse of this railway station. Over here you find some vending machines for both regional trains but also the metro, another access point to the metro and most importantly, especially when you take the train that I'll be taking on my route today, there's also a small supermarket, because the train I had doesn't have a dining car. So I can stock up so I know I won't be hungry and thirsty during my ride to Mabes and from there on to Charleroi. The underground section is probably not where you're most interested in if you watch this video, so let's go to the main concourse. And as you can see, I end up straight at the main concourse over here. Because this is a terminal station, the layout is pretty simple and straightforward. At the end of the railway tracks, you find the main concourse and most shops and railway related services are located around this area. For high speed trains in France, you will find, depending on the railway station access gates, however this wasn't fully implemented yet at the moment of recording. Throughout the railway station there are plenty of screens that will host route information about both departing and arriving trains. My train was already listed, however the platform number wasn't given officially, although I think I already noticed my train over here. But before I go to the train, let me show you a little bit around over here. Of course you've had lots of shops, fast food places etc, the usual stuff at the railway stations. And there's also a first class lounge here on the right that's called Salon Grand Voyageur. However, if you're traveling with Eurostar trains, both the Eurostar trains to the UK, but also the Eurostar trains that used to have the name Thales, you can't use this first class lounge. If you're traveling second class like me, there are some spaces where you can wait over here and there are also quite some spots where you can charge your mobile devices. However, I always found it pretty busy over here. So finding a spot in one of those places might be a little bit challenging. The railway station has been extended over the years. And there's a newer part that looks much brighter, as you can see right here. You can see it already on the tiles on the ground if you're entering the newer part. Throughout the railway station there are lots of vending machines where you can buy train tickets, but I strongly recommend you, and especially if you take the long distance trains, to buy your tickets in advance. Especially for the high speed trains, there won't be sold more tickets as there are seats available. Something I really like is the piano at this railway station. You see this pretty often in railway stations, it's not unique though, but I like it. Right here I'm walking towards the entrance of the RER trains again and this is in the newer part of the railway station. But before we go to the train and discover a little bit more of the railway station, let's see what we can find around the railway station. By the way, I strongly recommend you to pay good attention on your luggage over here. It's a well known place for pickpockets, but if you pay good attention on your luggage, you should be fine. At the front of the railway station, there's a taxi stand and also some bus stops can be found over here. Personally, I never traveled with a bus in Paris. I don't know why, I think the metro system is actually pretty good, so therefore I don't need to take these buses. Around the railway station you find lots of small restaurants and also hotels. I think it can be really busy here, so if you book a hotel over here, just keep this in mind. Even though I pointed out the kind of first class lounge, that first class lounge is mainly for the TGV high speed trains. If you're traveling with Eurostar trains to the UK, there's a separate first class lounge behind customs. And if you travel with Eurostar trains that used to be the Thales trains, so the red Eurostar trains, there's a special lounge at the side of the railway station. The first railway station over here was opened in 1846. The current railway station originally dates back from 1864. When I was here, some construction works were going on to improve the railway station for the Olympics that will take place in 2024. The lounge for the Eurostar trains that are formerly known as the Thales trains 
was being refurbished at the moment I was here. Mainly the branding was being changed, because this right here is the entrance to the lounge. Metro access can also be found around the railway station, obviously, and I really like these metro entrances. And if you want to get around by bike, there's also a bike sharing program. But I think it's time to go to the inside of the station, because this is where the magic happens if you travel from here. So let's go back again to the main concourse. And like I already mentioned, the layout is pretty simple and straightforward, but it's still rather big as well. Before I slowly move towards my train, if you go up, you find the entrance for the Eurostar trains towards the United Kingdom, because it's not a part of the Schengen Treaty and not of the European Union either. So custom formalities can take place over here as well. And from this point, you have a great view on the railway tracks. And something else I noticed was this point where you can tap your bottle with drinking water to reduce plastic waste. And even though my train wasn't listed yet, not at the general departure screens and here not on the screens here on the right as well, I am pretty sure that this over here is my train for today. My train was listed about 15 minutes prior departure. It's listed both in the general departure screens you find throughout the railway station and right before you enter the platform, there's a more detailed screen that will host route information. Nowadays, this is called a TER train, what basically stands for Local Express Train. However, up until recently, this was being mentioned as an intercity service. And to me, both for the speed, the amount of stops there are, and also the distance, this train really feels more like an intercity than a TER train. When these were still intercity trains, in the north of France, you didn't need a reservation to travel with an intercity train. So I guess making the step from making this an intercity to a kind of local express train isn't a big step at all. One thing I found, and you can already see this on the outside of the train, these trains were not clean. The windows were really dirty, so the views from the train, <laughs> I was not really happy with that. These carriages were also known as coal rail carriages. Coal rail basically stands for comfort rail. These carriages have been built between 1975 and 1989. There used to be a very big fleet of these carriages and you'll find them all over France. And you still do, but mainly on regional connections and some intercity connections. By the way, a little side note, if you want to go from the middle of the tracks towards the metro or the RER trains, you also find access at the middle of the track, as you can see here on the right. You can also switch between the different platforms this way. Anyway, back to the trains, what we talk about in this video, and these are the core rail trains in France. These trains here also used to be intercities, like I already mentioned before. And I traveled in Corel carriages before, because on the sleeper trains you also find refurbished carriages that have been made for sleeper trains, and the seating carriages are also pretty often Corel carriages. There is a first class carriage, however tickets are only being sold as second class, so therefore the first class was rather busy, because it's declassified anyway. And for now I think it's time to go inside these trains and show you what they are like from the inside. Not all carriages are the same, I can tell you this already, but most carriages are like this, and these are the regular second class carriages. There is a mix of both airline style seats and bay seats, so seats facing each other. At the moment seats do face each other, you'll find both seats with a table in between, and you can fold this out to make it slightly bigger, and some other seats, well they are just seats facing each other with no table in between. I personally think that these trains look pretty old and a little bit teared down. I mean, they are technically still perfect, however they looked a bit old inside and also cleaning the windows would make a big difference, I guess. The first class carriage, actually this is the only carriage why I didn't do a proper seat tour, but hey, I will show you over here. The first class carriage that was once again declassified comes in a 2x1 configuration and was rather busy at the moment we left Paris. The seats are a bit wider and you have slightly more leg room. However, the spots where the seats do face each other, I found the leg room really minimal at those spots, at least from what I just saw like this. 
In all carriages, both in first and second class, at the beginning of the open compartments, you find special luggage racks. And of course, you find the overhead luggage racks throughout the train, where you can store quite a lot of luggage. I mean, initially, these trains were meant for long distances anyway. I honestly don't know if these carriages have ever been refurbished, but they looked pretty old to me. Also, the information between the carriages, for example over here, a network of the intercity trains in France, was pretty outdated. In a way, I liked it, to be honest. But I think paying some more attention to these trains and giving more accurate travel information and not the travel information from at least 10 years ago. Actually, information from almost 20 years ago, because I saw the old SNCF logo on it, would be very much appreciated by not only me, but other passengers as well. I mean, just pay some attention to these carriages. They are still being used, so treat them like they are being used. This is basically what I'm saying. Within these trains you can take bikes, and this is definitely the best connection if you're traveling by bike and train, for example between the Netherlands and Paris. Apart from the open compartments I showed you earlier on, I also noticed these smaller compartments for 6 people. They are, well, what you might expect of smaller 6 people compartments, right above the entrance doors. You can adjust the volume of the loudspeakers, the temperature. And a light switch is also located over there, although it didn't seem to work for me this time. The leg room is not so generous over here. I think sitting here with 6 people would be... Well, it's possible, but I wouldn't like this. At least I would prefer the aisle seats in that situation. But having two mirrors opposite from each other gives the coolest effect ever. It's the infinity mirror effect. Apart from the dedicated bike areas, I also noticed that some people just park their bikes between the carriages in the official luggage area. And even though I didn't need to use the toilets, the toilets I noticed didn't have running water, what is really not okay. At last for these trains, because I also take another train on this route, let's do a seat tour in the second class. At least the seats you find most. There's quite a sturdy fold-out table in the seat in front of you, and this includes a cup holder. Right below that, there's a magazine rack, and at the side, not everywhere, but there should be a garbage bin. You won't find sunscreens, but you will find curtains instead. And their reading lights, that didn't work. These trains are potentially good trains, if they have some more maintenance. And this connection is great. And something I really like about trains that are being pulled by a locomotive, is that you have these great views from the back of the train. And I mean, leaving Paris North Railway Station like this, to me, it's pretty unique. I always arrive and depart here with a high speed train, and this is for me the first time ever that I leave this railway station like this with a non-high speed train. Okay, before I show you the views from the train, let me show you something quickly about how to book your tickets for these trains. I'm doing this from a perspective from the Netherlands, where I am from. The tickets for the section between Paris North and Equiline, what is the first station in Belgium, or the other way around, can best be purchased via Trainline. Trainline will split your ticket automatically on the section between Paris and Maubez, and this will be booked via the French state owned railway company, and Maubez Equiline will be booked via the Belgian state owned railway company. The section between Maubez and Aqualine does have a different price level if you book this via the Belgian State of Railway Company. For passengers with destinations in Belgium, you do have the option to book straight from Maubez to your destination in Belgium as well. However, it might be that this won't pop up directly on the bookings website, so in that case you have to manually split the ticket in Maubez. Within Belgium you also find very good deals. For example, a multipass that I'm using a lot for myself, but also as a senior or a young adult, you do have very good deals on trains in Belgium as well. If you're traveling to the Netherlands, the French local government, Eau de France, what is the area that's neighboring to Belgium, doesn't allow the Dutch state-owned railway company to sell their local railway tickets. What doesn't make any sense really? This is managed on a local governmental level. And a government on a local level that is running trains 
near the Belgian border, where also lots of potential passengers from the Netherlands can use these trains and doesn't work together with none, the Dutch or the Luxembourg railway companies. I think this is ridiculous and this is the least I could say and the most friendly way I could say it as well. And even then, the Dutch state-owned railway company NS International is selling quite a lot of regional trains within France. At least you can buy those tickets. The really promotional tickets for these regional trains can't be bought though. But if I want to buy a ticket in the south of France with a regional train, I can book it, but not close to the border with Belgium. What well, doesn't make any sense. Well, and for the rest, how you have to book your ticket, I wrote this on the screen. For now, I'll show you some views from the very dirty train windows between Paris and Mabès. And I'll get back to you at the railway station of Mabès, where I'll show you briefly the railway station and also the second train I had on this route on my way to Charleroi. Here in Marbès and France, close to the border with Belgium, you have to change between the trains. I think this is, well, no, I'm not sure, this is a train that arrived here. This is a train that will go to Paris. The train that came from Paris arrived at another platform. But I think they try to manage this as much as possible with a cross-platform change, so you don't have to go down and up. It's not a really an accessible station, but I'll show you in the video. The railway station of Marbès isn't very big, but it's quite functional though. And even though I already mentioned it's not a really accessible station, I found out that at the end of the platforms you will find ramps to the platforms. However, the tunnel that's the most obvious way to go from the main concourse of the railway station and between the different platforms only has stairs. The front of the railway station is rather big and over here you find a big square where you find lots of bus stops. Within the main concourse of the railway station there's a small convenience store and a ticket counter as well. That's basically it, this railway station isn't that special. From here on I'll continue my way with a Belgian railway class 96 train, also often called the Denny's Nose. I already have two videos where I'll be featuring the interior of these trains, so I won't do that this time. I'll link those videos in the description of this video. From my best, I took an intercity train to Charleroi. At least in Belgium it's mentioned as an intercity train, but that's literally every train in Belgium. In France this is listed as a TER train. And most important, the windows were clean. That's it for this video. I honestly think that if the windows would be a bit cleaner in these trains, it would be so much better. Maybe they need to kind of upgrade. I mean, these characters are still okay. 
um, the Belgian train was just simple. I already recovered these trains in previous videos. Anyway, I hope you like this video or this has been a helpful video to you. If so, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more trip reports about more sustainable ways of transportation, mainly focusing on cross-bordering and or long distance traveling, this is not a super long distance, but it is a long distance and also international. So then hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to miss anything, also hit the bell icon. Before we really end up this video, one last thing. Once again, thank you for watching. If you are interested in other trip reports, of course you can find them on this channel. And if you want to know about specific routes, in the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map and on this map you can find all trip reports. If you liked this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up. See you on the next video.